Hi, John. Hi, Melissa. How are you today? We're good. Weekend's gone. Yep. Back to another week um, at Warlord here. And I have asked the community another question. Um, and they would like to know your answers to this question. And it's about okay. the history of Warlord games. Okay. Um, first question is from My Crimson Jeans on Twitter. And their question is, how did it all begin? What tickled the fancy that led to what is now Warlord Games? Ah, great question. Uh, well, as fairly well known, I've always been um, obsessed with historical miniatures. And um, I had 24 years or thereabouts at the Fantastic Games Workshop, which of course only did fantasy or science fiction models. And uh, I always wanted to do historicals. And then I got made redundant, which gave me the chance to uh, set up my own company. Originally, I thought, well, I'm not going to carry on in the toy soldier world after 24 years. I'd go and do something more grown up. Uh, but that didn't happen. So I made some Romans with my pal uh, Paul Sawyer, uh, ex White Dwarf editor, and we made a box set of um, Romans in 28mm just to see whether they would sell. And 16 years on, the rest is history. So it was a mother of necessity in the end. But uh, I always knew that uh, uh, wargaming with 28mm plastic historicals could be cool. The second question is by Wooly Mike. Hi, Wooly Mike. Uh, what was the first Warlord model, you say, that was actually held fully assembled and ready to paint? Oh, uh, that would have been uh, 16 years ago, and it would have been the Centurion from this box set. Um, it would have been this fella here, the Centurion, and uh, he was, became our emblem for a while from our first release this lovely Peter Dennis artwork. So it'd probably be uh, that fella there, which we'd have got as a, we'd have got it as a test frame through from uh, Renedra. And Paul and I would have run home with the, our sprues, uh, undercoated, assembled undercoated, and then we would have painted the Centurion first, I'm sure. So that'd be my first. Our third question is from Wayne Sanders on Instagram, and they would like to know how has Warlord Games turned out compared to your initial vision and where you wanted to take the company? Well, that's a really great question. Um, uh, it's turned out well so far, and funnily enough, it has gone pretty much to plan. I did write a business plan uh, many years ago now, and we, we try and be three years ahead in our vision of where we're trying to go. And we are fortunate in following on in the footsteps of Games Workshop in that we've learnt from them. So we, we've learnt a lot about pace and timing and how to get new releases out on time, etc., and how to support your various games. Uh, so saying, we do like to surprise ourselves by doing something uh, completely extraordinary, like the motor, motor torpedo boat game that we suddenly bought out. Nobody was expecting that. Uh, nor uh, Black Seas, the Napoleonic uh, uh, naval uh, game. That's been very good indeed. And certainly nobody saw the epic stuff coming. That was uh, just something I thought, that was a bit of a whim um, of mine. And But uh, the rest of it has been slow, steady progress with bolt action, progressing down that road. And the same with Black Powder and Hail Caesar. Those are our three biggest game sellers. And we're gonna carry on with those very much um, in, the, in the manner that we, we've done so far. Uh, but there's always something exciting waiting in the wings. Um, and that's the way I'd like to carry on doing it. So bread and butter most of the time, then do something really wacky. Right. Our fourth question is from David Michael on Facebook. And they say, is there a game system that was dreamt up in the early days of the past that you never did or still haven't managed to get to production or release? And what was it? Hmm. Um, yeah, you got me thinking there. Uh, there are so many good ideas for game systems that uh, you're chatting with your buddies at work or in the pub or your old war games pals and you can think of loads of great ideas that you'd like to come to and it's all down to the one day type thing. Um, it took me three years to convince my team here that uh, Cruel Seas could be a good fun game and because uh, they all thought well that's just your obsession John, you're interested in one six hundred scale motor torpedo boats, but nobody else is. And I did the old thing of uh, build it and they will come. 
and uh, and so we made a fun game, made the models look great, and sure enough, it's been a, it's been a big hit. Uh, you know, it's calmed down now, but uh, for a long time, it was a, a really a really cool game. Uh, Others. Um, I had the epic idea many years ago again, and uh, it's not new, it was done by Games Workshop 20 years ago, but it's new to historical gaming. Uh, and so, so in epic there's a lot more to go for. I can think of five or six great tropes that would, uh, that would really do well in the, epics, in the epic system. We'll, we should be announcing another one in about six weeks time, I think. Uh, so look out for that one. Uh, but we're never going to tire of bringing things out. Um, it's always different scales, always skirmish games and then mass combat games. Um, so watch this space. The fifth question is from Scott McIntyre on Facebook. And they ask, is this business still as much fun for you as when you first started? Scott, I can definitely answer that one. Yes, it's uh, more so. Every day is more and more interesting and still fun. I genuinely enjoy uh, coming to work, parking the car, coming in and seeing everybody at Warlord. And there's problems every day. That's a management thing. It could be if we're running a bakery. Uh, but in general, uh, it's a fun company to be working for. Making uh, model soldiers and rule books is good fun. Uh, I can't pretend it's not. Uh, it's never easy, but uh, nobody said it would be. But no, nope, always still good fun and uh, as much fun as I've ever had. Um, the next one is not a question, it's a just a statement from Mike Aldridge who says, I wouldn't ask him anything, I would just shake his hand and thank him, thank him for such a great gaming company. Oh Mike, that's really kind of you to say so. I should equally shake your hand because we're nothing without our customers and uh, I'm glad you enjoy the style of our company. There's lots and lots of war game companies out there, many hundreds if you think about it, and each of them have their own style and uh, uh, thank you for liking the Warlord style. Our seventh and last question is from James Cutts on Facebook, and they ask, how many names did you go through before choosing Warlord games, if any? And if so, what, st uh, what stands out as something you remember that didn't make the cut? Smashing question. Uh, Paul and I had a naming session. It's a bit like putting a band back together, putting a band together, and of course you obsess about the name of the band when it's really the, mo the least important thing. When you look at lots of the bands around the world, their names are, you know, mean nothing they become to mean anything of course um, I wanted to call ourselves Dauntless Miniatures or Devastator uh, after McCullough the Devastator one of my uh, uh, heroes from the English Civil War so it could have been Devastator games and then Paul came up with what about Warlord because we were both brought up as kids 12 year olds with the Warlord comic uh, an English, very English comic uh, in black and white for you American comic friends, uh, which was of its time, shall we say, and very heroic. And so was the logo, uh, so much so that we, we had a very similar logo uh, and uh, in black and red and white, which was also Games Workshop colours as well. So we kind of put an amalgam together of, of that logo. But I think Warlord sums us up pretty well. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time today, mm -hmm. John. No worries. Um, and we will see you again next week for another lot of questions. More questions. Keep them coming. Yes. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much.